Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newer updated patrons, Ken K, Mark B, and Dennis R. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. First up today, we have Chuck Cook reporting on a new FSD beta feature. Maintaining speed for traffic flow. Check that out. I, I'm on a 70 mile an hour highway. It just changed to 60. The cars are going around me and it said maintaining speed for traffic flow and it went down to 69. I'm, I don't have any overrides in my beta profile that I'm driving in right now. So that is a new feature for sure. Uh, I heard about it from Rocco last night. I wanted to test it out here on 995. Uh, here we go again, passing another 60 mile an hour speed limit sign. And it crosses it, doesn't change the speed limit. Although it is, it does have identified 60 on there. So what is the logic it's using to come up with 69? That's an interesting question. Watching the rest of Chuck's video, there are certainly still some questions on how this feature is working and if it's working as intended, but of course the idea will be to keep up with the flow of traffic to some degree, a very nice feature. 50% of the people said they love it. 33% said they hate it. Do you take uh, solace from the pictures and from the public uh, small sample reaction? Well, it's big, it's bold, and it's gorgeous. And what you've got is a million nine of pre-orders. That's a huge number. And what's going to happen is this thing's going to start delivery. It's probably end of third quarter. And it's going to be priced, the base model will be priced right below 50,000 bucks. And it's going to start rolling across America. It's going to be like a rolling billboard. And people are going to see it. And they're going to be like, wow, that's really interesting. And they're going to go to the website. And they're going to order a Model 3 or a Model Y or a Model S or a Model X or a Cybertruck. And you're going to produce this whole halo effect which is exactly what happened back in 20 when uh, the Model Y first came out and people didn't know what to make of it. This is even more grand because it's not going to cannibalize any of the base products because Tesla has never been in the pickup truck business. So you're not going to cannibalize anything. So it's going to be a home run for Tesla and it's going to really catapult the stock and it's going to really catapult is volumes into next year. So it's time to ask you all the question. Let me know below. What do you think the base price of the Cybertruck is going to be? Even if it is below $50,000, there's still a chance that variant is not available for some time because I would guess Tesla will start with the highest variant of the Cybertruck when production begins. Take this one for what you will, but because we reported this source saying production at Fremont was paused, wanted to pass it along the same source, met God in the wilderness, is now saying that production has resumed. Honestly, just one or two days probably wouldn't be long enough for upgrades. Maybe it was just line maintenance, but either way, there you have it. Tesla shared this video about its glass and some of the engineering, but this video was actually released one year ago. Here it is on Tesla's YouTube channel one year ago. But in case you're new, I think there is one tidbit you should know and a good reminder for the rest of us. The roof itself absorbs 99% of the UV radiation coming in. So it's amazingly safe, even though you have this large open experience inside your vehicle. Over the years, I've heard many people express concerns that they were going to get sunburned driving in a Tesla because the sun was just going to beat down on them with the glass roof, but not the case. Apparently, a lot of you guys really like this one. And yes, Ground News is the sponsor of this video, but there are some other really cool features that I did not even mention last time. But first, in case you missed it, I think we could all agree a lot of the mainstream media news now is really just a political ideology that's actually being pushed. Ground News aggregates all of the news articles on a particular subject and then actually tells us the political lean of each source, whether it's left-leaning, center, or right. If you love efficiency, this is for you. You can see a quick bullet point summary of all of the articles for the left, center, and right leaning sources. Per my wife, I won't fully dox myself, but there is a local tab you can click on and set your location to get local news. A feature I didn't even mention last time, but honestly, it's one of my favorite and most used under the For You tab, the custom feeds where you can literally create your own news feeds. Here's one of my feeds, just labeled tech. You can search for any topic you want. You can also exclude certain topics that maybe you don't wanna hear about. Click confirm and there you have it. If you'd like to steel man your arguments and hear what the other side is reporting on and what they're omitting, the blind spot feature is also super useful. Example for the left, news stories that had little to no reporting on the left and same for the right. 
and you can easily bookmark and save any story or article you want for future reference. Ground News was developed by a former NASA engineer. There's also a mobile app with all of the same features as well as a browser extension. It also integrates seamlessly with Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. I really have found this to be a mission worth supporting, so you can head to ground.news slash electrified to stay informed on breaking news and compare coverage across the aisle to avoid the media bias. You can sign up for free using my link below, or you can get 30% off for unlimited access if you think it's a worthy cause like I do. Enjoy. We get the results from a Bloomberg survey of over 5,000 Tesla owners to see how things are going. This follow-up survey posed more than 130 questions and the lowest score responses were due to Elon's acquisition of Twitter. So over the past four years or so, the sentiment of Elon has actually dropped the most, not a product or service, I guess, which is a silver lining. Despite that, I think most importantly, most owners planned to stick with the brand because they overwhelmingly loved their cars. And it's exactly what you would expect Elon getting involved in politics that is rubbing certain people the wrong way. As I've said before, Elon is going to do Elon and he's a lot more than just Tesla, which yes, can hurt Tesla at times, but it's who he is and who he's going to continue to be. We have to take the bad with the good. And as I always say, that balance still is far in the good the way I see it. In fairness to the critics in a 2019 survey, more than half of Model 3 buyers said their opinion of Elon influenced their purchase and I know that holds true today to some degree. But it's one of those situations where once you go electric, very rarely are people going back to ice. So despite Elon's antics, as you can see from 2019 to 2023, on average, most people still agree they have a positive view of Tesla. And in terms of Tesla owners feeling like they're part of that community also dwindling from 2019, Naturally, as Tesla grows, that sense of close-knit community is going to disperse a little bit. Where I get lost though, is when these people start to say that Elon is a negative role model for other business leaders, I'll just really never be able to get on board with that sentiment. All political views aside, as a business leader, this guy is literally from a different planet. And of course, keep this one in context because most people are staying with the Tesla brand, but the people that do choose to go a different route, the number one reason they cited disapproval of Elon at 21.5%. But percentage-wise, it's not that much higher than quality or service or brand reputation. And for Cybertruck sentiment, nearly half of the Model 3 owners planning to buy a new car in the next two years are considering a Cybertruck. On whether these customers buying Tesla Tesla's FSD was worth it, still most of them agree or strongly agree. Honestly though, I think this is heavily weighted towards where you are geographically because we know that FSD beta is overfit for certain locations right now. And despite all of its shortcomings right now, most people still think Tesla is on the right track toward fully self-driving cars. On the cost of Tesla insurance where it's available, somewhat of a mixed bag. Importantly though, despite all of those folks who got higher quotes, still most people are likely or very likely to recommend Tesla insurance to some else. Also, very importantly, when it comes to the actual product ownership experience, people are loving it. And I thought this one was cool, the Tesla customer wish list, far and away, number one, smaller, more affordable vehicle. We all know it's on the way. Feels weird to say, but I hope Bloomberg keeps doing these surveys. And yes, it's somewhat of a small sample size, 5,000 out of millions of owners, but it's also not 500, so I think it's worth taking a look. VW CEO Oliver Bloom said today, VW does not aim to be compared with companies that offer only single models like Tesla. VW will instead focus on individualized cars that are linked to the brand identity for each car brand. I'm not sure what he means by single models for Tesla, but there you have it. Earlier today, Elon said, I tested the version 12 alpha build today. It is mind blowing. Not to burst anyone's bubble here, but if you go back, Elon said FSD beta nine will blow your mind in 2021 and FSD 10 will blow your mind later in 2021. The mind blowing thing is of course based on your perception, but what we do know is that version 12 is not going to be beta anymore. What that actually means, only time will tell. The Coachella City Council, which yes, is a place, not just the event, 
has given the green light to a plan to introduce 17 Model Ys into their transportation fleet. This will be a ride share services agreement geared toward helping people in the community get to work, doctor visits, school commutes, and more. And yes, it's a very small scale for Tesla, but it's a very cool program and we know what happens with butts in seats. All right, guys, so we definitely have to at least touch on this story from Reuters. The special report talking about Tesla and Elon actively suppressing customer complaints. The info in this report is from both sources and customers. They're basically saying Tesla employees were told to stop customers from making service appointments that were only doing so to complain about the driving range of the cars saying Tesla created a diversion team in Vegas to cancel as many range-related appointments as possible. Some employees celebrated canceling service appointments by putting their phones on mute and striking a metal xylophone. Managers told the employees they were saving Tesla $1,000 for every canceled appointment. Hopefully the former is an isolated incident. I mean, look, humans are going to human. I'm sure you've got it by now. The overall complaint is that Tesla has been rigging their range estimating software and listing their vehicles within EPA range that's higher than what people get in the real world. But remember, EPA does their own testing. The sources said when the battery fell below 50% of the maximum charge, Tesla's algorithm would show drivers more realistic projections. Elon wanted to show good range numbers when fully charged. However, this complaint was years ago. At the time Tesla programmed these range projections, it was only selling two models. And Reuters could not determine whether Tesla still uses algorithms that boost the in-dash range estimates. Let's take a pause here. This really is somewhat of an ethical dilemma. If Tesla playing within the rules the way they are written is allowed to list a higher range estimate that may not always be exactly real world accurate, should they, with the goal of increasing customer adoption and educating customers that real world driving habits, acceleration speed, tire choice, climate, letting them know that all of this is very complicated and nuanced and is going to impact your actual range figures. Not to mention different automakers having different size safety buffers that allow range after that zero on the screen. And I would add these algorithms are probably fairly tough to gauge because when you think about the battery charging curve, the same thing is going to apply when the battery is depleted. And it's not like Tesla is the only car company whose batteries degrade in the cold. It's every EV battery on the market. Even companies like Apple have admitted issues with their prediction algorithms before. It's true in 2020, the EPA asked Tesla to reduce its range numbers across the lineup by about 3%. So EPA does its own testing we're also familiar with, and some companies just don't do their own and use the EPA numbers, but Tesla actually does their own testing and will sometimes deviate slightly from those EPA numbers. There have been some studies done on the actual real world results, and one of the representatives said Tesla has consistently designed the range meters in his cars to deliver aggressive rather than conservative estimates where Tesla kind of deviates from the rest of the industry. In one of these studies of 21 different EV brands, the research found on average those cars fell short of their advertised ranges by 12.5%, while Tesla fell short by about 26%. A rep from Edmunds said they've gotten really good at exploiting the rulebook and maximizing certain points to work in their favor involving EPA tests. But it's important to know even companies like Tesla that will then do their own testing outside of the EPA, the EPA still has to approve the window sticker numbers. So even if Tesla is the most aggressive in this regard, the co-author of that study said, I'm not suggesting they're cheating. What they're doing, at least minimally, is leveraging the current procedures more than other manufacturers. In an Edmunds test in 2021, all five Tesla vehicles failed to meet the advertised range target, while nine out of 10 models exceeded their range targets. And don't forget, earlier this year, Tesla was actually fined for false advertising in South Korea, and they had to publicly apologize. And on June 19th, Elon and two executives did exactly that. But to paint this whole diverting customers who don't require in-person service as some terrible thing by Tesla, I think is going too far. Naturally, as a company that already has real service things to deal with, if these customers have Teslas that don't actually have anything wrong with their batteries, and it's just misguided expectations on how the range 
numbers and figures should work, those people really shouldn't be going into Tesla service and taking up valuable time from other customers. I don't wanna make this a bigger deal than it needs to be, but we do know it's a very nuanced conversation. There's really a lot at play here, but I'd love to hear from you guys, what do you think? Should Tesla display more real world numbers or within the rules that exist, doing legal things, advertise the best number they can to attract more drivers because that's one of the first numbers customers look at. And maybe they should pair that practice with a bit more education on what to expect in the real world and why there's going to be a difference. But I did want to dive into this one because I don't want anybody thinking Tesla is lying or cheating or scamming anybody, suppressing information, muzzling customers, because that's really not at all what's going on. There's just some sensationalism going on with this report. We touched on the Lucid Air Sapphire being available for reservation at a low price of $25,000. Well, now they have released candidate cars on the line, so production right around the corner. Sawyer found some pictures on Reddit of the first upcoming Honda Full EV. We don't yet have official specs, but this vehicle is supposed to make its debut early next year. It's supposed to be slightly bigger than the Honda CRV, and Honda has said this might be a successor to the CRV, which of course means this is a crucial vehicle for Honda because the CRV is one of the best selling cars in the North American market. In terms of styling, to me, it's kind of whatever. And this is unconfirmed, but the word on the street is this vehicle will qualify for IRA tax credit. So we'll find out in the months ahead. I've been covering EV news now for a while, and I have to say this is the first time I've ever seen a round screen digital display in an upcoming EV. So the next gen Mini Cooper EV will certainly have some flair. And I wanted to share some pictures of the upcoming Polestar 5 because personally, I think this car is awesome. The four door coupe style should go into production next year, 2024. It's expected to have a battery pack over 100 kilowatt hours that should exceed about 370 miles of range or 600 kilometers with an 800 volt battery pack. Polestar has said they want to compete with the Porsche Taycan, especially when it comes to handling and performance. And it will have a full length glass roof. It's being designed in Sweden and it's set to be manufactured in China, but there's a 500 person team in the UK that's actually working on the suspension, steering, and brakes, many of these people who have worked on Formula One teams. This vehicle will most likely cost north of $150,000, but it'll be interesting to see it come to the market. Don't forget to check out Ground News linked below. It's a really cool company that I think is worthy of supporting, especially in this day and age. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLumis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.